Right, go, Gus. Hit Gus. That's the most I've run in four months. It's May 29th, and I've got to get myself in shape for a Spartan Race August 17th, and I have not worked out for four months. So. So here's the news. I am doing a Spartan race. What? Yeah. Like one of those military crazy obstacle running Spartan things. I'm doing one. You may not know what a Spartan race is. I didn't. Here's the deal. A Spartan race is, it is running. Sorry, she wants to come up for this. She should do a Spartan race or two. It would help with these rolls. Okay. So, Spartan race, it's running and obstacles. There are four different distances of a Spartan race. A sprint, a super, an ultra, and a beast. I chose to do the shortest, which is called the sprint, obviously. It's about three miles with 20, 25? 20. Let's call it 20 obstacles. So I'm doing the sprint. Are you done? Great, I need to focus. What are those obstacles? Spear throw, monkey bars, rope climb, barbed wire crawl, you know, in case you're trying to escape from prison. Olympus, you, the twister. Okay, that sounds fun. Inverted wall, A-frame cargo net, multi-rig. Herculean hoist, Atlas carry. Oh look, that's a big heavy ball that looks like a cannon ball. Awesome. Sled drag, bucket carry, tire flip, just to name a few. So okay. A lot of stuff that sounds miserable <laughs> and also kind of fun. But they show you what every single one of them is right there. So you can practice multi-rigs at home. We need a multi-rig. What? Some girls want rings, I want a multi-rig. I've always liked athletics and I've always been competitive. I'm really hoping that that carries me through the race because I've never been very good at practice. We'll see how that goes. Let's start training. I'm gonna die. One of the things that the Spartan race calls for is running, a lot of running. They actually say that that's the most important thing to train for, is the running. I've been training for everything else, because that's the fun stuff. <laughs> Couple things I realized, I whine a lot. I'm going to work out right now. It's 7 p.m. I hate working out at night. I'm cold. The best part about running, when you get to a red light, is you get to stop. You know what sounds good right now? Cup of noodles. I hate this hill because I hate running. And when you add a hill into it, I just hate it more. Someone's fighting through asthma. She doesn't stop. You okay? Mm -hmm. Are you a fucking badass? Mm -hmm. Tell me about the workout you just did, Katie. <laughs> that. Just that. That's a vomit burp. That's a burp that usually is holding back throw up. Because that was terrible. I ran up this stupid long hill three times. Legs at the top, lunges, squats. As Dr. walked, and then walked on. That was terrible. In a really good way. I'm really happy, but I'm also really hungry. Let's go get some food. Yes, please. Come on. No, don't make me run down. <laughs> Come on. Ow, I can't even run downhill. It my legs. <laughs> my legs are so, they're like sloppy. So, what are we good at? Burping and whining. This Spartan thing's gonna be a piece of cake. <laughs> As you can tell, I run with the grace of a gazelle. Um, but honestly, I actually wanna figure out if I'm running properly because I have some aches and pains that I seem to have always had, but I don't think I've ever learned how to run properly or maybe I already am, I don't know. So let's go find out. 
I'm going to videotape you. You're just going to be running across here. And we're going to start with a nice, easy pace. Okay. And then we're going to keep building that pace every time we run through here. Okay. So we're going to go slow, and then I want to see when you run fast if that changes your run gait at all. Okay. So when I run slow, I'm definitely heel striking. Well, no question about it. Even when I'm going faster, too, like that's 80%, and yeah. I'm still heel striking. Yeah. That's painful running. No wonder my feet hurt. Yeah. See that? Your foot is almost coming inside the center line, but it really, like this, with a lot of running, this will start really bothering some part of your body. Well, it's funny because right now I'm dealing with a, a top of the foot pain right okay. here. So one of the things we're trying to change that we want to change is landing on the forefoot, the ball of the foot. And when I say forefoot, I don't mean on the toes, okay? It's got to be on the ball of your foot. So basically your first metatarsal to your fifth metatarsal is where you want to land. Okay. All right? It's typical when people are trying to go from heel to forefoot. They try so hard to run on their forefoot that sometimes they're either on the tip of their toes or they're on the ball of their foot, but they won't allow their heels to touch the ground. Right. So it's fine if your heel makes contact with the ground. You just don't want that to be that initial point of contact. Sometimes when I tell people, okay, I want you to run faster, what they think of doing is they think about taking longer strides, right. bigger kick. No. If you press on that gas pedal, if you press on that gas pedal and you lean more aggressively, your stride length and your kick is gonna get bigger, but it's a byproduct of your lean. Right. You don't run faster by taking longer strides. You just have to lean more aggressively and you're gonna go faster. These injuries that you're talking about, I think they really stem from what we're seeing there is that heel striking and all that pronating or supinating right. that's happening. That's going to take its toll on your Achilles, your calves, your IT band, you know. So we've got to teach you how to run on your forefoot. We've got to teach you how to pull rather than push, all right? Put this foot down, put the other foot up, and now just lift the forefoot up so I can put my hand under there. And you can put all your weight there, don't be afraid. This knee's slightly bent, all right? So when I say go, what I want you to do, Katie, is I want you to switch leg of support. Ready? Okay. Go. Oh, good. Let's do that again. Ready? Go. Okay, the reason I do this exercise is because now what you're doing, and thank you so much, instead of pushing, which would crush my hand, you're right. lifting your foot. I'm Let's... trying to get off your hand as fast as possible. Well, there you go, <laughs> and that's what I mean. I use this to see whether people are first going down, then pushing, and then pulling. You went from, from this position, pull, mm -hmm. pull, pull. Just practice that pull, that's right rather than going down, putting your weight, and then pushing right. and then pulling. Like right? jumping off. It's right away pull, yeah. So your head is more you know, steady, shoulders are more steady, so it's that pull movement that you've got to work on and you've got to focus on. I wanted to talk real quick then before yeah. you leave your upper body. You have a good arm bend, but the problem is, is that you're so rigid that you have a lot of lateral movement. Yeah. You need a little more movement in the arms, less in the shoulders, because as soon as you have lateral movement or shoulder rotation. What happens is everything kind of follows. Yeah. Hips fall. So you gotta learn how to really relax. You have a good arm bend, but you just have to hinge from the shoulders and relax this nice and easy, nice fluid movement. And you do I really want them sort of like straight to the sides? Because I seem to cross a lot well, too. No, crossover is a natural thing that's gonna happen. Oh, okay. That's fine. This is not natural. This is a natural, okay. you know. If you were doing this, it would be different. But if you're <laughs> just, you know, your hands are kind of coming to center line and then going slightly out, that's normal. This is almost... I'm very tense. Barely moving, but then the shoulders are moving laterally. That's a lot of energy wasted. And I don't know, even that could affect even your landing when this is going one way, the heel is coming in, it's rotating this yeah. way, you know. I'm wondering if like, because of the characters I play, they're so very tough. Okay. And I wonder if I've not taught myself to run, like I look strong on camera, right. and it's actually, done Tri this to me because I'm Probably. very conscious of looking tough when I run so um, I want my arms to look because it's those are the characters those I are the characters I got and it. god I got forbid it. somebody tell me I run like a girl <laughs> I love now that you bring that up I when I watch movies like I watch some of these 
actors run and I'm like saying, oh my God, that doesn't look natural at all. They're trying so hard to look good when they're running and it looks horrible. Oh no, I'm doing oh, the there's, opposite. Uh, what's, can Everyone I mention thinks names I'm so here, tough. Uh, but we'll there's one movie out. with Tom Cruise. Oh yeah. And, and, but again, not just Tom Cruise, there's a lot where oh, there's yeah. a scene where they have to run. And I watch them, I say, oh my God, they just got to do something because it looks so awful. Yeah. They're trying so hard and it just doesn't look right. It just yeah. doesn't look organic. So if it were you and you knew you had a race coming up in a month and a half, what would you focus on? When we work with athletes and we, even in triathlons, we say, look, you don't want to be changing much when you're getting ready for a race. After you're done with your season or your, your A race is done and then we have time to focus and we don't have to rush things, then that's time where we can really try different things. But right. before the race, uh, I don't know how much effort I would put in trying to change too much. A lot of you may not know this, but before I was an actor, I was a swimmer. I was pretty fast, thought I would actually swim in college. It's my only educational plan that I had. <laughs> and then I got hurt. But I take swimming very seriously and it may show up in a Spartan race. Very serious. Status update. I went to the emergency room yesterday and the doctor said that he's like 95% positive that I have shingles, which is awesome. The good news is, is that the rash hasn't come, okay, rash hasn't come out yet. So the goal is to stop it. I can't really work out right now because I don't want to go to the gym if I have shingles and I still need to work on my grip strength for the Spartan race. So that's what I'm doing. I just kicked Nelly in the face. I'm feeling better though. Just the nerves in my spine are all messed up. And I'm doing this. That was a bad throw. Who knew that you could get a spear on Etsy? <laughs> spear throw is probably one of the only things in a Spartan race that is not really physical. It's more technique. And I'm gonna say for myself, it's luck. It is going to be luck. <laughs> I'm gonna practice a lot over and over and over and over again. So I don't miss that damn spear. Got dinner, don't worry about it. How many weeks we got out? Two, babe. We've got two weeks until the Spartan race. And I have shingles. Don't tell anyone at the gym. I didn't get a rash, so I'm technically not contagious. So weird. How hot do you think it is out here? 85? How hot is it gonna be in Hawaii? 85 with humidity of 85. <laughs> when I decided that I was going to do a Spartan race, I figured that I would have to change up my training because for the most part, I train for aesthetics. I train so my body looks a certain way on camera, whatever's right for my character. Nobody cares what you look like in a Spartan race. <laughs>
pockets. Just grab 30% of your weight. Also grab those butt, get the bikes. Because I'm new to this style of training, I really needed some help to figure out what I was actually doing. And so every Sunday I have been going to Spry Society to work out with Coach Renee. The workouts vary from week to week, but this week was not fun. And go! We did a 400 meter run. <sighs> then the assault bike. How many cows, Renee? 10 cows. <laughs> 10 cows on that bike. If you don't know what an assault bike is, it's like hell on a seat with arms and pedals. It's terrible. There is the tire flip. FYI, at Spry Society, for some reason, I always end up with the guy's tire weight. That's not cool. It's not cool. Good news is, I'll be ready for a tire flip. <laughs> There's the bucket carry, which, if you wanna know what that looks like, you know those orange buckets at Home Depot? That, with a lot of rocks inside of it. There's also the rings, which is just the way that it sounds, like gymnastics rings. So I have a bad shoulder and that is hard for me, so I try not to do the rings at training, just in case. So a lot of grip strength and shoulder strength is required for this Spartan race. So I do a lot of dead hangs and upper body stuff. <laughs> After this workout, I was exhausted. They're sore. My hands are really, really sore. After every workout at Spry Society, I'm exhausted. It's like doing things to your body that are not natural. With the boo-boo? Yeah, I got, a, I got the boo-boo in my arm. I'm gonna book it. Feel good. I wish I would get my period. New slash, women bleed out of their vaginas. Sorry, that's horrible. <laughs> Please don't put that in there. <clears throat> New slash, women get periods. We do. It is a really beautiful thing that happens once a month. If you're an athlete, it also sucks. As of right now, I'm gonna get it four days before the race. Because you've gotta think about a period on top of your race. A period and stopping it. I know, once a month you cry like that. But seriously, I was a little worried jumping into a muddy water pit with a tampon in because that thing absorbs fluid. That's the whole point of it. I know, let's crescendo this. It absorbs fluid and I was jumping into a pit of muddy water with potentially cotton shoved inside of my hoo-ha. You know, that's too much information, but guys don't have to think of this shit. how I feel. I have to be honest, there are days that I do not want to work out. My feet hurt, my back hurts, my neck hurts. <laughs> I'm not feeling very good this morning. Not to a beat Katie right now. I don't like waking up early and going straight to the gym. I'm very sleepy. I have no energy. That's one of the things that is required when you're training for something is to work out all the time. And I'm not a big fan of anything all the time, except cake and wine. I have officially done everything that I could possibly do, short of last minute steroids. I don't think it works that way, but if it did, I might be. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't. Maybe I would. Okay, so I'm on my way to Hawaii. Here it is. I've given it my all. I've trained so hard. I am terrified. At least it gets to end with a Mai Tai and a cute guy. I rhymed. Dr. Seuss would be proud. I just finished a really hard workout. I feel like all my workouts this last week have been really hard. And there's a part of me that wishes all my workouts for the last two months have been this hard, but can't change the past, no regrets. And 
and I'm feeling okay. I mean, the only thing that really concerns me about the race is my asthma and how hot it's gonna be and the humidity and where I'm gonna store my inhaler and my grip strength and the spear throw and a big Nautilus ball pickup and a zigzag wall. You know, so not much, I'll be fine. <laughs> it's gonna be fun and I'm gonna be in Hawaii and worst case scenario, I'm gonna finish the race out with a Mai Tai, my sexy bitch of a boyfriend and a pool. So what's the worst that can happen? That was not fun at all. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, leave your comments, let me know what you liked, and if you're curious how it went, come back next week, set those alerts, and get ready to watch me actually run a Spartan race. Bye! She's so docile now that you gave her a treat. She was such a whiny see you next Tuesday before. The hardest thing I've ever done in my life.